recording. Um, firstly, do you want to like introduce yourself and like talk a bit about like what you do at the park and stuff? Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm Simon Allen. Um, I'm creative entertainment manager at Oldham Towers Resort, and well, we kind of do absolutely loads and loads. Um, but I suppose for the purposes of this um, discussion, um, I write a lot of music for our entertainment products. So that could be uh, scare attractions. Uh, Mardi Gras, Oktoberfest, Christmas, everything in between. I do some area audio, so I've the most recent project I've done is Mutiny Bay, um, updating the music there. I did Walliams World. Um, so I've done a couple of attractions, so I did Jewel, most recent update to Jewel, um, and loads of other stuff. I also do a lot of recording, so if the business needs um, kind of voiceover work doing, so for the, the monorail, um, anything yeah. like that, I'll kind of look after that and then I also do some MD stuff so um, within, the, within the show so we're just starting some summer lawn shows um, so I've kind of done the, uh, the arrangements and backing tracks for there, um, rehearsals with the vocalists, look after all the hotel products as well um, I've, between myself and my colleague um, who's another entertainment creative we look after scripts um, and choreography and um, Working with the uh, designs and concepts for the scare mazes and stuff. So That's so cool. Yeah, massive. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it, 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 for me, on my side, there's a, a big emphasis on the the music. And even if I'm not writing the music, I'll sort of help curate music or work with external company or person. Which me leads me on to one of my questions, actually, but I'll ask it later. It's about like who who else you like collaborate with. Whether you collaborate with other parks, like Fort Park, and you've ever like made some music with in collaboration with them before have you ever done that before or yeah so i haven't written so creek freak scare maze i didn't write the music but i produced it and mixed it for them um and kind of augmented it and they had they got in touch with um a performer that kind of did like metal music and they wrote some music and um it was cool but it was a bit messy and mm -hmm. it kind of it didn't have it didn't have the drive that it was required for this sort of attraction so i overlaid some like metal drums and kind of remixed it that's so cool so i did that and then um also for thought i'll often do their fright fright nights uh flash mob the, uh, yeah. the acting thing that they do, I'll, I'll do that. And then um, Chessington, I've done a few bits and bobs. The main thing I've done for them is uh, the Wilder, one of the Wilderfest mm. things. Um, it's like a 15 minute piece of area audio. And then wow. just done a little bit of work with them, not really much, but I've just done a few soundscape stuff for their new uh, area that's opening or refreshed area, the Pirate yeah. Shipwreck. Cove, I think it is, or Shipwreck Coast. Yeah, Coast <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, and like, I've, do you... I did a little, I've done a little bit for Warwick, but not, not loads. Cool. I worked on their their second iteration of um, the Jousting Show. Oh wow, that's Just amazing! A super music supervisor for that. And do you record everything at Orton Towers or like at home? Do you have like a recording studio at Orton Towers? Or? There's a there's a recording studio in the actual towers. No way! I never even knew that. So I haven't always been in that. I've only recently, I've only moved there in the last probably 12 months. That's amazing. And before then, I had to do it in this office here, which was an absolute... Oh, really? Uh, as you can see from what's behind, it's not mm. acoustically treated in any way. Shape yeah, yeah. So trying to mix was uh, oh, I get you. somewhat yeah. of a challenge. And then also the people above me, uh, <laughs> poor them is all I can say. Having oh, yeah, because they... The same yeah. four bars for an entire day while I'm working oh, on them. Oh gosh! But That's yeah, so, so I'm in the towers it. now, in the big thick stone walls, so no one That's can. That's amazing. Oh, so you're actually in the towers, the recording yeah, yeah, studio. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I never knew that. <laughs> it's been there since the sort of late '80s, early '90s, and that's what oh, okay. it's like. Oh, um, okay. See, I didn't know if all the music was like done outside of Orton Towers, and they just cut, like contracted it in I didn't realize they actually had so to be fair until I like reached out to Orton Towers I didn't know like there was a musical director of Orton Towers so it's incredible and that, that you create the music at Orton Towers yeah That's great. I mean it's over the years there's been a mixture of all sorts really mm. so it's, it's been kind of outsourced 
Yeah. People, there's some some of it's been done internally, and then the business restructures, and then it goes back to external, and then it restructures, I get you. and then it so it kind of it it sort of ebbs and flows with whatever the business decisions are, or whether you know whether yeah. it's from Two Swords to Merlin, and then yeah, yeah, kind of st- stuff like that, really. But there's there's, that, there's been a sort of rich heritage of music production. At the, mm. at the resort um and then that's in great the last probably you yeah, know seven years so probably the last i don't know eight eight years there's been a lot of work done in regards to ambient and atmosphere and bgm yeah across the park there's pretty much now not a space where you can go where you can't hear yeah music. that was one of my questions it's like do you think it's good that Orton Towers has a few spaces that doesn't have music because obviously when you get to Orton Towers there is like music everywhere playing is it good to have spaces where there isn't music playing do you think or does that take away from the experience I think there should be but it has to be considered true so it shouldn't just sound like there's a gap mm. because there has to be a reason why there's no music sort of thing yeah so it would be wrong for us really to like put a load of although we do put speakers in the garden for like scare fest oh yeah Christmas. that's cool yeah, the, yeah the light show that we do but um kind of fit a you know like now it would be mm. a strange decision to put yeah yeah audio in the in the gardens sort of out of context yeah i get you because it's meant to be peaceful but yeah if there should be spaces where the, there's a breathing space um, yeah trying to that, get that right so it doesn't sound like just it's like you for, you don't want to make it sound like you've forgotten that there's i get you <laughs> um one of my questions is um how many soundtracks do you think there's at autumn towers actually like how many oh my different God. Um, <laughs> that's a question do you think like it's in the hundreds or like <laughs> if we were to tally everything up, including retail, mm. oh yeah, true. Didn't even hotels, think about that. Hotels. Wow. Monorail car park. Ride audio. Aerial audio. Yeah. Lots. That's amazing. <laughs> so I can't be specific on that, but that's a good question. No, it's fine. Time. Yeah, because I'm trying to find the answer to that. But like, that would be amazing, actually. Like, just get the statistic on that. Like, how many soundtracks are employed at Orton Towers? That's yeah, cool. I mean, for, uh, Jewel, for example, although it's not obviously necessarily... it has the ride audio, but then it also has the queue line audio, doesn't it? So I don't know if you class that as two separate. I guess you class that as two separate soundtracks. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, just within, I mean, I know this isn't quite your question, but just within Jewel, I wrote probably seven or eight different cues. Oh, really? Wow. At the moment, because it's a bit, a bit sorry for itself, uh, Jewel is in regards to. Uh, it's one of my favourite rides, I love Jewel. <laughs> but just like, or Wicker Man, for example, that has mm. um, a whole sort of suite. Because the idea being that, sort of, as you move through the queue line, yeah, you get to the pre-show that the score gets more and more, um, yeah, yeah. So um, that's the kind of that's... the modern the modern way we do it. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, I mean, just in Walliams. So when I did Walliams, there's um, the main area audio. There's a version of the main area audio on Carousel. Mm-hmm. Then there's a version of the main area audio on Raj's. Bottom bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the the inside area or inside audio for the gangster granny ride. Mm. There's a few stings on Raji um the other one. Oh, I've forgotten the name. I've forgotten the name. <laughs> so just 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 there, you're talking like five pieces of music just within yeah. that fairly small area. So area, yeah, yeah. Um. This is a very hard question again, but how important do you think music is at theme parks? Um, I think it's 
one of the number one most important things. Definitely. <laughs> because it's the emotional response that people have mm. to, to music. You know, we could get it so wrong by putting... You know, if I wrote the wrong music for Williams and made it scary and oppressive, people would be like, <laughs> yeah. what? But kind of having that sort of score there in the background, it, mm. it, it it's a narrative and it accentuates how we want to make people to feel and stuff. Mm. So, for example, I've just redone Mutiny Bay, and the reason that well, I got asked to do that is because... Um, over the last few years, um, people's thoughts and perceptions have changed within the business about the piece of music that used to play in there. And um, it felt, it became a little bit unsuitable and it felt a little bit too... That's interesting. Oppressive is the wrong word, but kind of... Cliche, it, maybe? It, did, it, it didn't have joy in it. You know, we've, oh, got okay. of, we've got a lot of attractions on park that are sort of rooted in horror in one way shape or form i get you Jewel, wicker man nemesis um smiler oblivion mm. to be like the list's huge yeah so yeah. when people are coming to the park for a day of escapism and to kind of like feel good kind of mm. encountering all of these kind of like dark soundtracks doesn't ne- isn't necessarily the you right want to make it more fun <laughs> yeah so the brief was make mutiny bay fun again so that's, that's so cool. sort of kind of like jolly and yeah because i remember of, when that got updated actually i remember coming to meet ben thinking oh it sounds different it sounds more upbeat more exciting yeah um, it's, it's great because i have seen both kids and adults sort of like skipping along and like jigging yeah through. literally that's what i do when i get meet bay <laughs> and it's, it's exactly the right response that we want and it just sort of it really lifted the area yeah um, and that's it's amazing how just a simple change of audio can do that and yeah. change people's reaction and how they feel yeah. in a particular space. And um, it's funny to think about, it's hard to remember Owen Towers without all of the music because it, it used to not have all of this music. And it, I think if you'd, if we ran, went around and turned everything off, it would be a very Different bizarre place. sounding place. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of my questions, actually, talking about turning everything off. How is all the audio like synced up? So is that the re- the responsibility of like the, the, the ride operator or like do you go and do it? Or, like how is it all synced up? Um, and is it controlled by computers or? Yeah, so, well, there's a few ways. I mean, we've been updating it over the last few years and it's continually being updated. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the area audio is now on a network. So it's all controlled oh, okay. from a room just just above me wow. uh, by our um i didn't know you have to go to all the speakers and like switch them on or like if there was like a control mixer box and like the rides like at the roller coasters that they had like yeah, an so audio room them, or something yeah some of them still do have that so they'll have an amp yeah okay an amp, That's and cool. then it's just part of the ride switch on so smiler for example yeah yeah that the smiler audio won't play if smiler's down because it's all linked oh. it's That's smiler, interesting. So, so the ride starts yeah, or like um, I think Mutiny Mutiny Bay was all on, on a stand on a couple of standalone amps, mm-hmm. and then we used to have to go and put memory cards in really? to change the music. But this oh season, my gosh. that's all been changed, so it's all now on the network. Okay, that's cool. So Simon Horsley, who's our technical um, manager, he's got a much more important title than that, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's uh, done a lot of work to get a lot of it on the system now. So it's great because we mm-hmm. swap our audio over pretty much for every event. He can now mm-hmm. just give him the files now and he can just go little, 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 just change. Or if we want to put any voiceovers on, I can just give him the recorded media. And then, so we want to play it at three o'clock, four o'clock, and five o'clock. He can just schedule oh, wow. that and it will just play. So That's it's, so it's cool. really good. It's, it's so good. This is a bit different, but going back to what you're talking about before about having more and more music put in the park, I just remembered as well, like seeing a video on TikTok of like a new performance at Galactica where they've got like stage singers and stuff. Was that like one of your ideas, getting more like live performances and stuff? Uh, it reminds me of Disney where you've got like more live performances and stuff like that. Well, yes, it's part of our expanding events program. So that was part of Festival of Thrills. So we were given the brief. We were given several briefs by marketing, but eventually we 
uh, we managed to respond to to the brief in a way that they thought that they could market, and that was basically taking the seven big rides and giving mm -hmm. them um, personalities, and then oh, expressing cool. that personality through music. So mm -hmm. um, we went round and sort of basically gave um, each ride a musical genre. So Nemesis was kind of like grunge, grunge music. Mm -hmm. Galactica was kind of like this sort of synth manufactured pop. That's cool. Like I like um, that. Then, then basically throughout the day, those two acts would sort of do a That's little so mini cool. battle of the bands. And we had four stages with eight acts. Um, That's amazing. And um, yeah, it was great. It was it was it was really good. And it just again, it just brought another dimension and sort mm. of atmosphere and, and level of excitement and escapism. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a question for you. Um, how did you get into writing theme park music? And like, did you go to? I'm guessing you went to university, right? Like, where, where did you go for uni? Yeah. So, what version of the story should I give you? There's a really, really long version, <laughs> and then I won't give you. My sure. whole life, I won't give you my whole life story, but it was, it, it was pretty plain for me from even in primary school that mm. music was something I wanted to take part in in some way, shape, or form. That's cool. It's a bit early to say, obviously, in primary school, I wanted to be in a, in the in the entertainment industry, but yeah, I was, I was cripplingly shy as well, which didn't help. And um, I started off with clarinet. Um, then the story goes like this: Then we had a substitute teacher. That substitute teacher's main subject was music. He said, "Bring in a mm. keyboard if you've got one, and then I'll teach you a Harvest Festival song, and then we'll perform it in assembly." So we did that, and I basically got hooked. And then I had lessons, private lessons with him for well, basically until I went to university. So for years mm. and years and years. Um, and I did like A level GCSE music, A level music. Yeah. Lots yeah. of like am dram stuff and that. And uh, played in, played church, you know, in churches if they needed a church mm -hmm. organ and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then I went to um, Newcastle upon Tyne to study, and I did mm -hmm. jazz, commercial, and popular music. That's cool. And, um, and um, that was great. And I think, although I love jazz and blues, film soundtracks and um, in particular theme park soundtracks or shows. So, mm. you know, the most obvious place to refer to is Disney. So yeah. I, I went, um, I think maybe first year of high school mm. with my family and I've been like many many other times since but like when you were saying asking the question about how important do you think music is mm. and particularly within theme park or theatrical um, places that if everybody responds to the way to music I do which I know everybody doesn't but mm. it has to be one of the regarded as one of the most important things because the way that kind of hearing a piece of music, say from, I don't know, a ride that doesn't exist anymore or, or whatever at Disney, how yeah, that yeah, instantly yeah. like make me feel or transport me back or make me feel the way that I felt when I was there. Yeah, yeah. And kind of, I don't know, I, I respond, respond like with goosebumps and kind of, yeah. like, I get overwhelmed and it kind of, I can't control it. So I was just like, even though it's the, perhaps not the best songs that, Almost well known songs. If say you're yeah. watching, I tell you what, the the Lion King show, Animal Kingdom. Oh, yeah. I, love, I, I just oh. start, my eyes just start streaming. I'm going this summer. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. I contain it. And I feel like it's such a wallet. <laughs> but like, I, nothing, nothing else makes me feel like that. So. Do you know what um, Morton Towers needs? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. But um, you know, like at Animal Kingdom, they've got Rivers of Light. I don't know if you've ever watched that. It needs like a light show, like something like that on the water where the pond is in front of the towers. That would be sick. <laughs> it's something I'm, I've been trying to work on that for several years. It's just really? the, invest, the investment's yeah, so it's tremendous. Yeah. It's not, it's not a reason for someone to do it. It just takes years and years and years. That would be amazing. <laughs> My so, dream come true. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's an yeah. asset anyway. Um, anyway, so sorry. Um, and I think all of those things combined, and then I did. A, I worked as a freelance musician for since I left well, during uni, and then when I left uni, mm. and um, I kind of worked in all aspects of it. 
really, you know, like arranging, live performing. Yeah, yeah. The composition, you know, kind of like a job in music. Yeah. Industry. And um, how I got working here was um, I had a uh, music venue and mm-hmm. rehearsal studios in Stafford. Okay. And um, people used to come and rehearse there, and I'd always sell myself, like, oh, if you ever need a depth pianist or whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, oh, I'm really good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And um, someone rang me up once and was like, oh, we need a, you, you mentioned that you're a depth, uh, sorry, keyboard uh, p- pianist, and uh, we need mm-hmm. a depth. I was like, okay, you know, what's the details? Oh, it's at Alton Towers. We just need you for a few days. Oh, wow. Performing in the hotels. Uh, are you interested? I was like, yes. So, <laughs> I mean, I must be honest, I didn't even realise those gigs existed here until, until I got uh, a yeah. phone call. Uh, so I uh, took the job and it turned into two weeks and it turned into three weeks. Then it turned into uh, full time. And then um, the person that used to do a similar job to myself um, left and it became mm. a vacancy here. Oh wow! I just took a punt. That's I mean, amazing. I was, just, I was just like, I absolutely loved it. That like, it just sounds like a dream job. Like, mm. parks, entertainment, music. Like, yeah, literally. All these amazing things that I've loved experiencing myself as a yeah, guest yeah. around the world. I could now be someone that is involved with directly creating these experiences. And then anyway, I got the job, and um, it's kind of gone from there really so I've kind of gone from like fantasizing about you know writing great music or um theme park music in Universal and Disney or wherever really and yeah know, and kind of I'm doing that job you know so that's amazing you know, it uh, yeah I always I you know when I used to teach I always used to tell the parents like you know don't just let let them have a go yeah, you want to have a job in this industry, just let them have them go because yeah, what's the worst that's going to happen? That's incredible. <laughs> um, do you just compose music, or do you do other stuff as well at Orton Towers? Um, well, I do a hell of a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I have to sort of fit the composing in around all the other stuff. To be brutally honest, um, <laughs> it's quite a multitasking, creative nightmare sometimes. Wow. Um. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just looking at my desk now. So I've got a script for um, a swashbuckle show here, which is a CBB <laughs> show. There's a Birth of Soul stage show script and lyrics here. Which starts I see. Do you like productions as well? Do you do productions as well at Orton Towers? Is that yeah, part yeah, of it? yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, what's this one in? Oh, that's Oktoberfest. <laughs> Oktoberfest. I love Oktoberfest shows. Um, so good. Got on, and scare scare fest good as well yeah, got um i'm just rendering down a video for one of the stage shows at the moment um and then what else have i done this week i'm working on a new attraction for scare fest oh wow um can't say anything more than that but a new attraction <laughs> for scare fest new attraction for scare fest <laughs> um so it's something i've been working on for a year about, about four years actually so this oh wow this year is time for that one to fruit. That's um, cool. Yeah, so like just everything, you know. Do you ever get like apprenticeships and all like people asking if they want to like get involved with writing music or anything or? Um, we occasionally have someone that asks us if they can do work experience and they'll shadow us. But it's cool. quite. I know it's really hard if you're a composer because it's quite a boring like, it's... thing to do because you just kind of. I know because it. Sit. Yeah. There's, there's like there's yeah. not much for us to. Literally. Yeah, it's it's hard. So I d- yeah. it's probably it's really hard for like youngsters who want to get into composing as well because you can't really do work experience for composition because like you know it's very individual, isn't it? Like just yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, what can I say? Um, I mean, like I can, if I ever I wanted to get into some, it, I can set you some briefs if you really want to. There you go. And give you some <laughs> old like I don't know. Uh, That's so cool. These briefs or something. And that would be amazing <laughs> if if you want to i mean it's not yeah just set myself a challenge but like yeah yeah just for just for fun <laughs> yeah um what are my other questions uh oh, i've already asked that what this is just a fun one by the way i think i've come to the end of my questions but what is your favorite ride on towers <laughs> i had to ask 
People have asked me so much recently, and I never know. Well, it can be a ride attraction. So, or oh, unless you've got one favorite roller coaster and one favorite attraction, like a dark ride or whatever, you can do that if you want. <laughs> I always enjoy Hex. Oh, okay, that's I think interesting. As an experience, it's it's yeah very well executed. Um, and the soundtrack for that, I actually spoke to the composer to recently. Um, when I got them to bid for some work. Um, <laughs> Gosh, I forgot his name. He wrote the music for, uh, do you know who I'm on about? He wrote the music for American Sound. Oh. Isn't there another company as well called, I'm, is it I'm a score? Yes. Is that like a, a separate company that gets contracted in to do some s certain um, soundtracks or? Yeah, so um, they'll often do the big new rides. Yeah. For us. Um, and they'll work um, on stuff like, the fireworks shows. Ah, uh, okay. And do a bit of production work on on those. Uh, yeah, I mean we've, I think we first used those in 2015. Yeah, I think, I think it was. They were, um, they were still Galactica? a fledgling, a fledgling uh, little company based in Germany. Really? And then oh wow. Over the last sort of seven years, they've kind of grown and grown and grown to this quite large production house. Um, That's cool. Yeah, we st we still use them. Um, uh, prices have gone up somewhat since we first used them. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. So then, you know, you kind of need it will, you know, the brief will get given usually by the ride creative, for example. Mm -hmm. And then it's 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 having someone within the creative team who can articulate what the vision is. You know, and then sort of keep that collaboration up and making sure that you get what you want. I mean, Wicker Man was a real struggle for Iron Score because they did. Um, really, the that's thing. interesting. And they really struggled with it because some sometimes the the cultural references from Germany and here mm. they don't quite the uh, difference and don't quite match. So if something's particularly rooted in British or English culture, yeah. yeah. So we've used them to do panto stuff in the past, and we sort of we moved away from them a little bit, well, completely. And I do it all now, but because they just didn't quite get panto because it's such a specific mm. style of British theatre. Yeah, that we they weren't quite delivering on on the brief. Um, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, so I yeah, but they are they're great great that's cool and then occasionally we'll use other people so nick hudson is somebody that we occasionally use he does more work for thorpe and chessington oh, okay uh, does um thorpe park i'm guessing have a musical di director as well or like no a no we're the only place that, that, that does oh really um, yeah yeah does that mean does thorpe park always contract contract it out for their music Pretty or? Much. so um, I didn't know that. So how it works for us, because um, well, I don't really know why it does just for us, but it does. So we have <laughs> a we so as, as entertainment, we're mm -hmm. we're a sort of a full production house. So we have creatives who are myself and Kieran. Then we have stage management. I'm doing this because that's where I sat. Stage management department <laughs> that sit over there, um, and then we've got production managers that sit upstairs. Then we've got technical managers that sit over there, and then a um, head of technical and design that sits up there. We've also got a full um, scenic and wardrobe department, which is based within the towers oh, as well. Wow. So that's um, amazing. We do. We basically we're a theatre production team in house. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I've completely missed scenic. So we've got a scenic workshop um, <laughs> back over there as well. So they build our sets wow. for us and. Oh, that's cool. It's like TTA, technical theatre arts and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've kind of, we have, we have it all here. And we do sometimes still wow. need to um, farm stuff out to external mm. companies if we can't deliver because we're usually too too busy doing a million mm. different things. Whereas places like Thorpe and Chessington, I mean, Thorpe in particular, they don't have any of that. So any. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, that's really be, interesting. Um, is there a reason why? Or is it just they don't have the space or I think just maybe traditionally they've been they've been more of a thrill seeker 
Yeah. Whereas you're more like a resort, team. aren't you? Yeah. You're like a proper full resort, whereas Thought Park's just for like the roller coasters. And the, whereas like I see Orton Towers is like you've got the hotel, the monorail. It's like Disney, isn't yeah. it? I think. And the emphasis is changing a little bit at Thought. So their their event schedule is also expanding like mm. like ours. They just have a slightly different process. And I think the yeah. stuff being put in place to start to put the wheels in motion to, to give them more of a... Um, um, a system like we've got, but it's not yeah. happening quickly. And okay, at Chessington, yeah. they've they've got a very small scene in the department. Mm -hmm. um, but um, again, it's kind of uh, they're fairly limited, so a lot of stuff ends up being um, sourced by external. That's cool. Or it comes to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I'd love to. <laughs> okay, what do you need it for? Two weeks. Aww. <laughs> Oh gosh, <laughs> um, is there like a rotor as well for like which ride get needs like a music update? And I know a lot of soundtracks are kept, but like, isn't the Nemesis one still the original? I know it's been probably like remastered or whatever, but isn't that the original score <laughs> since it the nineties? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, um, yeah. And so and Nemesis is getting retracked next year. Yeah, it is. So I spoke to um, one of the senior managers in the business. So. I don't know if you saw last year's fireworks show, but they did a I'm school did a great um arrangement of the Nemesis mm -hmm. That's uh, cool. theme in that show. So I was like, we are gonna be uh, updating the Nemesis arrangement. It's the uh, theme tune as well. And like, oh, we, we need a violinist, I play violin, so I could do the very high pitch violin. Yeah. Do you like uh, do you actually do um do you like get people like musicians to come in or do you do it like MIDI like when you're creating, or is it a mixture when it you're depends. composing? I mean, truthfully, most of it is um, sample libraries. Okay. I use tend to use um, East West is what I've mm. used. I'm moving over to Spitfire Audio at the moment. Oh, I love Spitfire. So They're good. Use a mixture of the two. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if I'm doing more like contemporary popular based stuff something that needs guitars mm. and yeah spaces yeah. and stuff like that um i sometimes guitars very hard to replicate so i'll often get guitarists in to come and yeah. lay some parts down particularly if it's rhythmical um and then um bass tends to just play in to be honest with you i've got some great samples for that and then i'll use some loops that's cool and kind of say like i think what gives it an extra sparkle to to some of some music is kind of like I'll use sax loops, so sax solo yeah. loops or trumpet solo loops, and, mm. and it just brings an extra. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a live performance essentially. Yeah, it's yeah. Just not someone in the in the booth recording it. Yeah, right there, and it just brings that extra layer of detail and and realism to the track. Um, yeah, I'd love to get more real musicians in, but. Aww. I quite like it though. Sometimes it's nice having um like the sort of MIDI effects, like the it reminds me of like eighties music, like electronic music. I mean they're so unbelievably brilliant now. Like, you know Oh yeah, some of the like mm. one of the um one of the sort of Eureka moments that I had a few years ago was um a, a MIDI controller with mm. just it's just literally faders. <laughs> and using that expression and velocity and those sort of things so like to get the real genuine mm. like performance dynamics and expressions in in the instruments and then that just then takes it on to like another level of realism yeah because yeah, when you play as you well know when you play a, a string line it's not just like a, a velocity is it for like your whole <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it sounds okay but like to put that like performance in it mm. and that's the thing that takes the real time that's the stuff that i'll yeah sometimes struggle to to have the time to do because i'll often be like oh i've got an hour all right i'm gonna go and quickly try and like this and then i've, I've, got, I've got to be a meeting at 12 so then you have to like go to a meeting and oh like, god well oh, i've got half an hour right i'll go and try and finish that thing i was working on you're like oh god i can't remember what i was doing you're like oh so, like to have the luxury of like you know just having a studio and like you know mm. eight hours a day of like i don't get that I have to very much mm. multitask. That's uh, interesting. Dip in and out of 
yeah, yeah. Greatly. And it's it's sometimes hard work. Mm. You know, if you can imagine keep being interrupted when you're yeah. home or whatever. You just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just it's just part of the job. I'm not employed purely as a composer, so Yeah. Just, I get you. Just parts mentalize all these different things in my head and just pull pull them from that's so cool <laughs> um but thank you so much for answering all my questions i don't think i have any more questions from my list that i've compiled um but yeah unless you can if you want to say anything else like you're more but what's, your, to that. what's your ultimate ambition for what, what i want to do when i'm older um also like writing theme park music and just like films and stuff like that so i want to go to uni and do a um, composition i think that's the best route for me i think unless you have any other suggestions i mean that's a similar route to, to, to what i took um, i'm going to still keep up my instrumental skills as well like piano and violin and clarinet as well <laughs> yeah yeah i think just you know immerse yourself in as much yeah music and theater and yeah as you possibly can really you know i learned so much from going you know and you, i've just taken out your website or whatever earlier and you play played in played or you still do play in an orchestra yeah yeah and like for me you just kind of going and watching orchestras play yeah i, I just learned so much yeah literally from, for example you know and then kind of i just did stuff i just did all sorts of stuff there was a few times where i said yes to certain gigs i did i did one particular show in a pit orchestra and I was an absolute disaster, truth be told. You know, it was a professional show, and like I was, I was just, it was so. I mean, it wasn't all my fault, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I was playing keys too, and there were no, um, there were no uh, MIDI markings or anything on the score for any of the sounds uh, or anything. I was just, I mean, like mm. one day's rehearsal, boom, in you go. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> but you kind of got to have well you haven't got you shouldn't set yourself up for fail but you should definitely push yourself because mm. you'll only make those mistakes once and you'll learn big time from them and i mean it's a, I, th I think it's a, it's a bit different now from when i was going through the same process as you even though it wasn't that long ago i think the business in the world's moved on so much that I think some of the things I say are maybe a bit outdated, but I managed to do a bit of <laughs> bit of work with a, um, a media composer who sadly passed away now called Don Hughes. Um, I don't know whether he's got stuff online still. And he wrote for all, all sorts of people. Um, he did work with uh, well everybody, but including like Disney and. and wow. Do and you that. have any um, favorite like theme park composers of yours? Um, or like if you get talking about different parks now, like Disney and stuff, have you got like a favourite Disney um, ride soundtrack? Gosh, that's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> there is actually I've, so I've, many. I've always enjoyed Fantasmic. I love Fantasmic, that's good. <laughs> Musically as well. Wishes, quite liked. I really liked... Um, the show that you mentioned earlier from Animal a rivers of light yeah that's a particularly lovely soundtrack. that's good I've, i always i've always enjoyed um finding nemo oh yeah yeah frozen and that because they used to write a lot of theme park parades and stuff before they got the oh, wow. big time into into Frozen and yeah, uh, you can hear a lot of in, you can hear a lot of Frozen in the Finding Nemo musical. Songs. Yeah, you totally can. Yeah. yeah. Um. So uh, yeah. Um. You know. Um. I mean, I just like it all. I mean, gosh, I used to have. I mean, every time I went to, I mean, it's readily available. On, so when I first started going to the states, Apple Music stuff wasn't a thing. So. Yeah. If I wanted to buy that music, I'd just like come home with like a pile of CDs about this big, you know, from from the from the shops of like the soundtracks of the shows or the parade oh, music. Oh wow, that's or, so cool. Of course, because you didn't whatever. have the internet, you didn't have YouTube. It's so great oh, these days though, because you exactly. can literally just go on YouTube and just search up the, the roller coaster or the ride, 
in the soundtrack. I mean, there was a point where SeaWorld um, mm. changed emphasis and they got some great soundtracks written for their shows. Oh yeah, because like, I've never been to SeaWorld. I'm going this summer. I don't know if it's any good, but yeah, I was I was looking forward to hearing the music at the shows because I think the, they do use their music quite good. The area audio again. That's a really. I think SeaWorld's a really great one from for expressing how area audio can make you feel. Yeah. Because of the music choices that they use, I think it's quite quite interesting. And then. That's cool. They they went quite big on the production of their music for their show. So the dolphin mm. show. Yeah. Like I can't remember what it's called. Is that the one that's into the blue? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a very rousing score. Yeah. I think it, it like it really kind of it it really takes what's going on in the water and stuff to another mm. level. Yeah. Just, just by how that, that music sort of orchestrates yeah. the action, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, like Terror, Terror, what's it called? Um, Terror, uh, Terror, Terror. Oh, Terror, 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 yeah, like Hollywood. <laughs> the, the ambient music that they play for like 90s. That's amazing, the jazz. I know, it really gets you in the vibe of like the scariness of the hotel. <laughs> yeah, and how they put like the, the put the reverb on there. To give yeah, it, like the like, effects. Ghostly, yeah, because so... even though they've taken them recordings, they put like the crackly like saturation on and haven't they? And like the, um, or them sort of distortion and stuff, it makes it sound really creepy. <laughs> I mean, from a, from an overall package of audio, um, Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars. Yeah. Is unbelievable i'm not a massive star wars fan but same but it's amazing the attention to detail from, well from everything but we're talking about yeah. music from from an audio point of view is absolutely phenomenal like mm. there's just layer after layer after layer just, can like you imagine the sinking there <laughs> they do this one thing where they make it sound like a ship's going across the top of the land oh wow and it kind of pans that's so, so it's, like it's moving across the top. It's just unbelievable. And like, I was just gonna say, actually, I wonder how they think that they must use networks as well because they've got so many speakers. And like, when the ride's actually in operation, like, how does does the speakers are they in the ride vehicle or are they like throughout the ride? I never understand that and how it's all synced. <laughs> well, I think they do. I think they do a mixture of both. Probably. And what they what they're very good at is integrating their. Uh, audio systems within the design of the ride yeah it's almost like sometimes we're getting much better at it but sometimes it's almost a bit of an afterthought mm. and we'll you that de we'll design this beautiful building or ride or whatever, yeah it's like a speaker right there <laughs> and and like, Come on. so we've started doing that in scare mazes as well so that's now part of the design so we don't mm. always get it quite right but we design the um, sound, the physical sound design um, is considered a part, as part of the scene yeah, design. The so we'll, yeah, try and, yeah. we'll try and make it and so you can't see Even the, the simple things like the colours of the speakers, I've noticed like when you've got bushes around, you have a green speaker in the bushes. So it's like yeah. disguise camouflage, which is quite cute. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, have you ever come across Puy de Fou? Well, I don't think so. Right. It's, Right, you need to check this out. Let me just. Um... <laughs> right, you have to finish in a minute, don't you? Yeah, I've got to Let finish. Let me just send that. you a comment. <laughs> uh, yeah, is it a link? Because I'll, I'll open it in a minute. <laughs> oh, also, while you're doing that, what's happening with the Galactica TVs in the queue line? Because I've realised they're like off at the moment since uh, I've been I going. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, is there meant to be? I swear those used to be like TVs, like um, playing like a video, and there used to be audio in the queue line. But I don't know what happened. I don't know what's happened there. Um, I don't know, but I'll ask a question. The tech, there we so, go. Technical services look after that. Interesting. So they're, they're <laughs> it seems right. like they've left the TVs just go to rot in the grass. <laughs> I think it's got mouldy, like the TVs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't know what it is. That's probably a reason. There we click go. Through over here, if you click through that mm -hmm. link, you don't don't have to do it now. I'll do it in a minute. But, but the, look at the France one. Click click through, mm. and it's a theme park that's 
couple of shows. Uh, I think I've heard of it, yeah. But they're, they are, I've been twice and they, mm. honestly, I can't give, I can't justify how unbelievable it is. Wow. Words. Like, if you think, think Fantasmic times mm. a thousand. Wow. That is crazy. And amazing. Fantasmic is amazing. <laughs> and that's, that's how unbelievable that is. To check wow. it out. So the, the, the music's great. So they use a lot of um, Thomas Bergman and Two Steps from Hell. Mm-hmm. Nick Phoenix. So he, 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 yeah. they, they do a lot of uh, the sample pack for East West. That's cool. And uh, there's a guy called Nathan Sonorta um, who actually writes a lot of their soundtracks. Now, he's, I think he's just a bit younger than me. Um, he studied at the Royal College. Oh, wow. And, so I have a look around there the other day. <laughs> and, uh, just, yeah, check it out. You won't be disappointed. Amazing. I will end the recording in a minute, but don't worry, I'm not going to, like, end the call. I'm just going to end the recording, otherwise it's going to be a very long video. <laughs> so I'm just going to do that now. Hang on. Uh...